Well, it's been a really busy week for Uber. Here today I'm bringing you a second pretty big announcement of a new feature that Uber is uh, deploying um, in California. It's called Drive Pass. See if you can th figure out what it is. Drive Pass. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you what Drive Pass is and uh, when it's coming out uh, to your market. And then stick around because at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you not one, but two reasons why I really, I really like this. I think this is a pretty cool feature. Hey, everybody, it is Jay Crater with the Rideshare Guy drinking my cold Nespresso. It's 12.30 in the afternoon here in Northern California and it is pretty toasty outside. Uh, so I don't need any of that hot Nespresso. Okay, let's get into some background. AB5, this is all, all of this is about AB5, right? That's the law that says if, uh, if, you, fall, if, you, can't, if you can't answer these three questions correctly, then uh, the, the, the individual, us the drivers are employees. Uber does not like that. That would cost Uber a lot of extra money and benefits for us, the drivers. So they're bringing out these features to try and make it seem like we, the drivers, are uh, independent contractors. So I shared earlier in the week about setting your own price. And uh, that today, Uber told me, is now available to every driver in California. As of right now, every driver in California has that feature. Here's another one. It's called Drive Pass. So here's the background. The background is... Last year, they came out with a feature which allowed um, drivers in California to see at the ping the destination and how much uh, the fare was going to be and how long it was going to take you to get to where you were going. And as a result of that, a lot of drivers were declining, and there was no penalty if you declined a ride. You could decline 10 rides in a row, no warning, no problem. So um, I think what's happened is a lot of drivers were declining rides, and that is a problem for Uber because that brings the wait time for the passengers and makes it longer, longer of a wait time. Passengers are likely to say, hmm, that's a long time, I'm gonna check with Lyft. You know, so they lose that, that loyalty for their, from their passengers and the quality of their service degrades. So here comes Drive Pass. Number one, what the heck is Drive Pass? Could you guess what it was? All right, here's what it is. It's kind of what it sounds like. So when, um, let's say we've got a $20 fare. So I've got somebody in my car, the total fare that they're gonna pay is $20. Uber's gonna take 25% of that and they call that the service fee, okay? So in that case of a $20 fare, that would be about $5. What Drive Pass is, is you as the driver can buy upfront the service fees, okay? At a rate of $3 per service fee. So, um, so in that case, right, where I had a $20 fare, if I used my drive pass, that would have paid for that service fee and I would have gotten the whole $20 and I would have spent $3. So instead of making 15, I would have made 17. You follow me? Okay, but here's the caveat. The caveat is, is if you decline a ride, that's gonna use up one of your, drive, one of your service fees, okay? So if you only use five of them, right then you're paying six dollars a service fee right it would be double the price so it's only three dollars as long as you use each one of them uh all ten of them in a row so it's encouraging you to accept more rides all right there's a reason now a financial incentive for you to accept more rides here's what uber sent us uh, sent uh, drivers in um, san diego and sacramento and orange county uh, and it's not all drivers. They're, they're still kind of beta testing it, all right? And it says get 0% service fees when you buy a drive pass. So the idea is that Uber can say that um, we're, they're kind of con disconnecting their service fee from us, the driver, uh, by us buying it up front. And that's how they're kind of marketing it when they say uh, get zero service fees. Okay, get zero service fees. You're actually paying service fees, you're just paying for them up front. Okay, so number two, how it works. So you buy your, um, let's say I'm starting a shift on a Sunday morning and I, I think I'm gonna definitely have 10 rides. Um, I just say, yes, I'm gonna buy, you know, buy the, the drive pass for, for 10 rides for $30. 
and that would just come off my account. All right. Here's exactly how Uber presents it. Um, you can buy a drive pass for a select number of Uber X trips, so it's only available for Uber X, okay? And pay a zero percent service fee on those trips, okay? Even though you're buying it up front, they're saying it's zero. Um, after you purchase your drive pass, you'll have seven days, okay? So you don't want to buy a um, hundred of them uh, if you're not going to be driving much that week, for example, okay? So you have seven days to use them up. Once you've received all the requests that you've purchased, okay, you're basically buying requests. So 10 requests and you use up your 10 service fees. Um, you can go back to paying Uber's 25% service fee, normal, um, or you can buy um, another drive pass. Okay, now we're gonna look at the pricing. So what you see here is um, they're $3 each. Okay, so you can buy 10 of them for 30, 50 for 150, and 10 for Three, uh, for 300 but uh, the discounted rates um, you do get a volume discount so you can buy 10 of them for 70 cents each right you can buy 50 of them for 60 cents each and you can buy a hundred of them for 50 cents each so um, really good discounted uh, pricing all right so if you do the math um, the cutoff point at the regular pricing is $12 trips so if you can get your trips to be longer trips, trips that are more than $12 for the total fare, then you're going to make money. If, if you average $12, you're going to break even. And if it's less than $12, you're going to lose money on this deal. Okay, That's at the regular rates. And I'm going to use the regular rates because we don't know how long the discounted rates are going to last. Right? There's like the teaser rates, you know, like the banks do. <laughs> and then they, you know, they go up. Okay, number three, we're going to look at the numbers. We're going to take a look at the numbers. So first we're going to look at numbers that Uber has provided, and then I did my own little uh, spreadsheet. Uh, so let's jump into that. So what you see here is Uber's uh, example, and this is a 10-pack, a 10 and uh, $15 per fare. Okay, so this is above the $12 threshold. Yeah. Um, but they only did they only did eight trips. Okay, so you can see they only did eight trips. Um, and the bottom line here is with the drive pass at the discounted rate, um, you still would have made an extra twenty three dollars. But I got curious and I said, well, I pride myself on being a driver that can get long trips, especially on the weekends, because that's where we make the most money, driving seventy miles per hour on the freeway with somebody in our car. So I went to the last day that I drove, which was on uh, sun, uh, Sunday, February 2nd, and I took my first 20 trips and I put them on a spreadsheet. So as you can see here at the top, I got you know the fare, the 25% service fee, and then I did the drive pass at the regular rate and the drive pass at the discounted rate. And then as we scroll down, you can see that for those 20 rides in the yellow, I made about $300. With the drive pass at the regular rate, I would have made 334, and at the discounted rate, I would have made 380 dollars, right? Which is an extra 84 dollars just on those 20 rides. That's a 29 percent increase in my pay. Um, so over a weekend, I could probably have come close to making an extra um, 200 dollars, which is uh, uh, pretty great. So. The caveat here again is that you don't decline any rides, right? Um, let's say you decline one out of ten. Well, then that would that big save that big extra money would discount by about ten percent. Still, still pretty good. Still. So number four is drive pass good for drivers? Well, there's different factors to consider. Um, the first factor is timing. So if you're somebody who drives Monday through Friday rush hour. In, in, in a big city, you get a lot of little rides, right? A lot of little rides, a lot of little rides. And most of them are going to be way below $12. They're like the $8 rides, the $6 rides, the $7 rides. You know, the pick somebody up at work and drive a mile and drop them off downtown. And then in the end of the day, you pick them up at work and you take them back home. So it doesn't really work. So the timing is really, really important. So that's one factor. The next factor is your location, right? So in a city like San Francisco, we have a very definite, you know, busy drive time, commute time. 
in the morning and in the afternoon. Now you might be a driver in a more rural part of, of California, maybe like uh, you know Fresno or Bakersfield where things are a little more spread out. Well, then your morning and your rush hours might have more longer rides and that's something to take into consideration too, right? Um, and then the weekends. The weekends are always going to be uh, really a good time because there's just generally less traffic. So you can get more of those long rides and not worry about the traffic and get your per ride dollar, dollar value higher above the $12 so that this would really work well for you. And the final factor is pricing. So right now it's in three markets and they all have the same price, the pricing I just showed you. But will that price translate to San Francisco? I mean, in the, in the, old, in the whole Bay Area, if you take an Uber ride in Oakland, you're gonna pay less than an Uber ride in San Francisco, right? They have different pricing structures. So will the pricing for the drive pass be the same in all of California? Or are they gonna jack it up for those of us who work in San Francisco? Uber was non-committal. They said they didn't know yet. Um, they were testing it and they were gonna see how it would work. Okay, number five, driver pricing strategies. I got three suggestions for you. First one is use it more on the weekends than during the week, okay? You've just got less traffic to contend with. Two, use your, um, your destination filter, okay? Your destination filter. So a strategy I've used is um, if I'm in San Francisco, um, I'll set it for all the way to San Jose, which is like an hour full-time straight drive. And what happens is I get a ride to the airport, and then from the airport I'll get a ride a little further down, and then I'll get another ride, and they tend to be long rides, right? And then if I'm down in San Jose then, then I set it back for San Francisco. You only get to use it twice, but for that ride from San Francisco to San Jose, that could count as three or four rides, right? As long as you keep going in the same direction, that one destination filter use counts. So you get to use two in a day. So that's the strategy also. And the final strategy here is using Uber's new pricing feature. So as you remember, if you watched the previous video, um, our driver friend Gary was sending his multiplier to 1.2 and, and getting plenty of rides. So if you bought uh, a pack of 10 and then you set your a multiplier say to two, that means you're going to get the rides you're going to get are going to be double um, in value. And that would certainly seem to put you over that $12 mark. So you may have to wait a little bit longer in between rides, but when you got a ride, you knew that you were making money on it because the fare was double and you had bought the service fee for $3. So that's that would be uh, definitely something to experiment with. I like that strategy a lot. All right, so what are the key takeaways here? Well, first of all, there's a lot of unanswered questions, right? Is the pricing gonna stay the same? Um, are they gonna keep the discounted rates? Uh, is it gonna fluctuate between regions, right? We don't even know exactly when it's gonna come out. They just said in the coming weeks, they're going to expand this out. I like the concept and I like that it's arbitrary so you don't have to do it. You can keep things exactly the way they are. But the main reasons I like it is it gives us uh, something to play with, which I think you can use uh, to make more money, right? And you gotta be smart about it. But as you saw with my example from my Sunday, I could have I could have really cashed in on this. For a purely from a driver's point of view, it gives us another option, uh, a way to try and manipulate the system within Uber's rules to make more money. And that I like very much. Who doesn't wanna make more money? Show me the money, yeah? Okay, so uh, exciting times. If there wasn't a virus around, if I didn't have to wear this to go to work, you know, if I didn't have to worry about dying in my car, uh, this would all be really, really great. <laughs> so for those of you that are driving, God bless you. Take care of yourself and uh, don't get sick, all right? My name is Jay Crater. I want to thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, subscribe. Set yourself up for notifications so you know when we do our next YouTube Live. We do five videos a week. Get them. Stay on top of this. This is a great place to be. Y'all go ahead and have a great day. Be safe out there.